Our next scary double heat shot by Double the Eve of the Winds. <laughs> In short, Double Double Torn in Trouble, a 1993 a Halloween television day with Mary Kay and Ashley, who are my favorite twins. I mean, at this point in my life, I enjoy them. Kelly and Lynn Farmer, Orson's parents, John and Christine, are deeply deaf in danger. But before that, we see an open and lovely scene where they're decorating out their Halloween pumpkins. Decorate them, chopping them, they're at a party for Halloween as we hear the voice of a clown. And then we see in the end that they won the carving contest, the pumpkin carving. And they get a magical wand that only one can only work for two. And it works somehow making Oscar the Clown move around in circles. We say, Virat, how did I get the magical? Well, duh, twins are more in tune with magic. Believe me, my mom has a twin, and they made a lot of magic together, believe it or not. <laughs> Now, as I said in the beginning, they are deeply in danger of losing their house. During the Halloween season, they visit the Christine's old, cruel Aunt Agatha to ask for a loan. But with an infinite refusal, while the girls wait outside, they meet Agatha's grave digger, who is the actor known as Wayne Robertson, who tells them the story about Agatha's twin sister, Sophia, who, of course, played as Chloe's witch leechman, very wonderful character, was trapped inside the house. He explained to the girls Agatha home once belonged to a powerful witch who, before being burned at stake 200 years ago, had hidden her moonstone, a very gem that can give you the power. <laughs> Pretty powerful, huh? As children, Agatha and Sophia, tired of being twins, heard the tale and began to look for the stone in hopes of using the power to no longer be identical anymore. However, found a mission and hid it from her sister. Instead of beginning to use the magic to possess and make her sister's life miserable. But one year later on, Sophia and her friend George, known as Agatha's brother, prepared to elope and begin to live together. But Agatha, out of jealousy and rage, cast a spell and banished her into the mirror where she is hiding forever, keep hidden from the attic. On the seventh year of midnight, this Halloween, the spell will become permanent, and there will be no way to force Sophia to be free. Back at the house, though, Kelly and Lynn learned that the parents' financial problem as they were making cinnamon cookies that were made a recipe from Sophia. Let me say this. <laughs> cinnamon cookies, yum. How delicious. Mm. In any case... They wished, they wished that, they wished that Sophia was still around to be able to help them. Knowing this, but before we get on to this, during the first opening, they meet several strangers that will somehow help them in an unknown future. So you will see now. We'll begin to rescue Miss Nefreon, so before it's too late, the spell can be broken only by twins who possess the power of a moonstone. So Kelly and Lynn, ultimate goal was to appreciate the only problem is Aunt Agatha wears gem around her neck all the time. While trick or treating, they swap cars with two other kids. Yeah, good luck with that. And they found the first person had a homeless man who dreams up money and stand him. His name is Mr. N. Yes. Mr. N was the guy who was washing the windows of their car when they were driving to home. So basically, yeah, he wants money. He wants blue. He wants the blooms, as it were. Who offered to help the girls because they shouldn't be in such a dangerous journey without an adult. Plus, just to get the money. The girls carried them a toy magic wand that they won at the Halloween day before. Which actually, unexpectedly, general magic. Kelly, Lynn, and Mr. N visit a phony psychic to ask where they are able to find the witch scattered, but Aunt Agatha attend that night, but Lulu is unable to answer, so instead they use the wand to find the little case and sell it off, secretly hidden a ride on a pumpkin truck. Yeah, on a pumpkin truck. Really, you're smelling pumpkins for a while. And I love the smell of pumpkins. <laughs> Maybe me and my daughter can um, carve a pumpkin. Then I guys teach them how to grow pumpkins first. <laughs> They get dropped off in the woodland to find a small house deep inside. The home belongs to a man named Oscar, who was the clown. And the voice and his actor was Phil Fondicato. You may know him as that little guy from Sabrina Teenage Series. The one who fell in love with Sabrina. Ugh. They tell him that the whole story and agree to go along with him. 
and which means, as he says, when people go when when people grow tall, their imaginations get smaller. But I keep my imagination, and if I did, I wouldn't be this creative. <laughs> Meanwhile, John and Kristen discover the girls have gone and inform the police. But Aunt Agatha overheard the girls' plans using the magic mirror and started doing it. And every time when she sees Sophia, Sophia says, I'm going to be safe. I'm going to get all this rotten mirror. You're going to get it. Or something like that. Or in a nicer way, they're coming for me. They're going to save me. She threatened Kristen because she knew that the power of the twins come by and disappear to her own. Carrie Lynn and Mr. and Oscar turned the gathering in hopes. Well, they dressed up. Man and Mr. and Oscar create a plan to try to get the hand over the moonstone, which she does. Intrigued by the promise and double her power, however, they soon find out a good change. Before that, let's mention some creepy stuff they usually do. They are witches and wizards at that gathering, even vampires. Heck, one of them I could even swore was Dracula himself. And again, vampires can live for a thousand centuries, huh? <laughs> and as for. Oh my god. This movie was so old! But I enjoy it still. I still watch it every year for Halloween. Which reminds me. I think I'll watch it Saturday night with some popcorn, maybe. Mm, I should have bought some popcorn today. <laughs> Following, followed by, however, in the end, however, in the end, they were evil to get the charm. But they were found out, and they get chased through the whole town. They decide to split up. Lynn, who has the moonstone, while well, Oscar and Kelly go with N, Mr. N. Followed by Agatha and Butler, Kelly and Mr. N run to a dead in an abandoned warehouse where he goes out of control, confronts her, but she turns him into a crow. The thing was, you dirty dumb bird, you gave yourself and you tried to sell off the information or just to get money? Seriously, you deserve to be turned into a crow! Jerk. Leaving Kelly alone, later on, Aunt Sophia appeared to Kelly, expressing that Lynn and Oscar freed her, but Kelly released the trick. Dad, I, I guess I has transformed myself to try to catch her. Yeah. Honey, you should have known your sister's favorite cinnamon, not chocolate chip cookies. She managed to tie Agatha up with a magic wand, which messed up with her powers. But Kelly then gets caught by George. When she flees from the building, Mr. N and his crow find Lynn and Oscar and tells them what happened. But not before punching one of Agatha's tires off screen and Oscar very time. Lynn starts to panic since her, since her and Kelly have never been apart and Kelly's probably scared by herself in the same part of town. Lynn finds Mr. Grieger live and goes to ask help. He always lives at the sun sign, so yeah, he lives in a little house. Uh oh. Oh boy. Cut! Sorry folks, I have to head out. I will return with the next part later on. All right, ladies and germans, I'm back. Sorry, I had to go meet dinner, have dinner with my father, my my aunt, and and of course my sister, Saint Angels. Now, where were we? Where were we? Let's see. Have me a script, kids. Okay, okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. In the same part of town, Lynn found that Mr. Gravedeer lived ghost as for his help since he knows his way around Aunt Agatha's house. More than any of them. On the way, the police officer looked for a girl to see them driving away. She informs Don and Christine where she sees them, and Christine realizes it's near Aunt Agatha's mansion, so that's probably where they are heading. Fifteen minutes to midnight, the group that breaks into the house and searches for a mirror. Lynn here, John Sophia, but before they get in, they get in by using an Oscar, Oscar, this is a sort of man. He uses balloon to get him up there, and luckily, Mr. N. Poco, the balloon holes, were able to get them inside. One short little man ready to do things. And then they heard Aunt Sophia crying out for help in the attic, and she goes investigating. The, the good news is Lynn has the moonshot, but the bad news is Kelly isn't there. She needs both twins to free her. Middle later, Agatha and George and Kelly are. And Agatha attempts to poison them with jealousy and resentment toward one another. She tried to pursue Lynn in betraying her sister. How terrible! But Lynn refuses since she realized Kelly's most important person in her life. She promises to hand over the moonstone if Agatha lets everyone go. But Agatha agreed to, but Lynn placed the moonstone on the floor, and when Aunt Agatha broke her arm with a promise, threatened to turn everyone into animals forever, Mr. N flew down the staircase and snatched the moonstone into his brake.
While Kelly escapes from George's watch, the girls flee upstairs and Sophie's together. Oscar Grieber are turned her over. Before then, she offers him a deal. Money and, of course, to turn him back home. But then he felt the same how he could do that betraying two little cute little girls. I mean, come on! How could anyone feel betrayed for a little girl? Even the grave dealer and Oscar had something to say. And they were turning turtles. Which make it look adorable. And at the last stand toward Gaga, the twins asked Sophia that the incarnation is. But Sophie revealed that it has to come from their hearts. Aunt Agatha burst into the womb of the feelings after midnight. Lynn and Kelly tell each other that they love each other and want to be sisters, no matter what, no matter what else they say. But the power of love and loyalty transcend all, and Sophie is finally freed. And Lynn explains that she presses the clock ahead five minutes so it wouldn't last too long. Enraged, Agatha attempts to push her sister back to the mirror, but the twins fought back. And fell into fell into the mirror forever. All I got the evil magic is undone. The mirror is shattered. The doom has spent the rest of her life assaulted in another world. Yeah, that dog came and crashed. Boom! Yeah. Aunt Christine Aaron and Miss find Sophia safe and happy. And George remembers everything and feels that everything is a dream. So basically, when she was put in there, she changed him into a buckler. Yeah. Bad Agatha. Boo. In secret. And everyone, happy after. everyone kept this happening a secret, preferring to tell them that Agatha went on a long trip to a fleck. Kelly and Lynn thanked their new friends for helping them out. Mr. Gravy for his courage, bravery, and standing up. You know who you, you know, you know who. Oscar for our fabulous plan distracts him. Mr. N for being his first companion who ever looked out for them on the road. He tells them he also learned that money is just money, and friends are more important. And Sophia and George fell in love over again, which is adorable, according to the mansion, so it's second home for the whole family. She also agreed to give the families the money they need to save their home. A day later, while they enjoyed the family time in the garden, Lynn and Kelly are cleaning up the broken mirror in the attic, and they see Aunt Agatha one of the broken pieces. She asks for help, but the twin says, no chance, and walk out of the attic holding the hands, magic wand. The movie ends with her son, I hate Halloween. So yeah, this movie was, what do you think, what do I think of it? I think it was a good movie when I was young. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the aspect of the sisters, because I used to watch this with my sister. My sister and I, the thing is, here's a little secret about me and my sister. Even though we lived in the jungle, sometimes we would go sneak up into the cities. It would take us a long while to go to a jungle, to go through the jungle. You see, there was an old pony that lived in the jungle, but he had TV. Didn't know why he had TV. So we were able to watch Double Double, Tour and Pony Trouble. It was lovely. Seeing him fight off the evil Aunt Agatha. Very nasty. Very nasty. My sister and I loved it. We both felt because we're like, well, almost twins. We were born almost in the same year. So basically, we're like Irish twins. All I can say is, I hope you all have a happy Halloween. Also, there are news to the fact that I'll be moving out one of these days. In any case, guys, adios. <laughs> Toodles. Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. Hee <laughs> hee.